that Allah is there. He is more able. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Be conscious of Allah and be conscious of the wombs. Allahu Akbar. Be conscious of Al-Arham. Arham is the plural of Rahim, which means the womb of a woman. Those relatives of yours who are related to you through birth, Allah says, be conscious of them. Be conscious of your wives, your mothers, your mothers-in-law, and so on. Remember, a man has a role to play. And that role is to strike a balance between his wife, his own mother, and his parents-in-law. And if a, if a man is not going to play his role and run away and duck and dive, he will create a bigger disaster. He needs to draw lines from day one to say, Mom, I love you the most. But the love I love you is totally different from the love I love my wife. That is a different type of love. Mom, this is the line you shall not cross. And my beloved wife, here is a line you don't cross. That is my mother, you don't come and tell me stories about her. If she is wrong, you mention it in a very polite manner. You don't fight with her, maybe you can come to me and tell me in a polite manner exactly what is going on. But I don't want to hear tales and fairy tales and stories which, are, which have salt and pepper added to them just to make me against my own mother. Allahu Akbar. You will never be able to replace a mother, but a wife, you can have ten of them. Allahu Akbar. Remember four at any given time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. I better clarify that because people might go and say, this man believes you can have ten wives. No. What we mean is, you can get another wife and another one if you'd like. But your mother, there's only one. At the same time, there are many mothers who are very sadly oppressive towards their daughters-in-law. We have witnessed it and we have seen it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. In the English language, they are called in-laws. One wonder why the law has to come into place. Maybe the lawyers and everyone else also gets involved at some stage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We need to have a brilliant relationship. You must give your children independence after they are married. The only time you interfere is when they are going against the commands of Allah. If they are not reading salah or dressing inappropriately or swearing and so on, then you can interfere. It is your duty. But whether or not they attend a function with you is up to them. Whether or not they live with you is up to them. And you should happily allow them to live separately because that is a right that they have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. My experience is those who live further away from their parents are happier with their parents than those who live within the same house. That is experience. We have seen it and witnessed it across the globe. You cannot have two kings in one kingdom, nor can you have two queens in the same kingdom. So if your wife is a queen, your mother is also a queen. And if both want to rule, they are going to cross paths at some stage. It is not going to work. One woman per kitchen. Let us try and use that rule and understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really grant us understanding. And yes, if there are people who love each other and they are living with the live and let live policy, then alhamdulillah we will encourage that as well. In the rare case where mother-in-law is getting on with daughter-in-law, then alhamdulillah that is nurun ala nur. That is light upon light, it is goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us at the very beginning, be careful, be conscious. And he says, you, Allah is watchful over you. He is writing down absolutely everything. There are angels writing down what you are doing, how you are thinking, what you are saying, behind closed doors, how you are treating your wife, your children, those who are near you. That is a verse that is read when the nikah is about to take place in the masjid. Let's look at another verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon O you who believe The first address was O people This one here is O you who believe Be conscious of your Rabb as you are meant to be conscious of Him and do not die except in the condition of submission. Look at how the verses of consciousness are being repeated. Not by mistake, intentionally at the time of nikah. To remind you, watch out from this day, be extra conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man who oppresses a woman, Allahu Akbar. We will come to verses tonight inshallah if Allah gives us the time. Otherwise we will continue tomorrow with the same topic if we do not complete it inshallah. Because I don't want to rush through one of the most important topics. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he listens to a woman who complains directly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then has revealed another verse that we read at the same occasion. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa koolu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. وَمَنْ 
يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الله says in surah al-ahzab o oh you who believe be conscious of your creator and only utter that which is upright that which is correct that which is full of politeness that which is full of bringing people together abstain from that which will create problems and difficulty and disunity only utter that which will bring about happiness that which will bring about a smile that which will bring about justice allah says only utter that which is upright if you do that then definitely allah will make pure your deeds for you and forgive your sins whomsoever follows allah and his messenger has definitely won and is very greatly victorious Imagine Allah is telling you, follow Allah and His Messenger. If your wife instructs you to do something haram, you won't listen. And if your husband instructs you to do something prohibited, you won't listen. Because Allah and His Messenger are to be followed before everybody else. That verse also implies that directly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, only utter that which is upright. Why is it so important to mention the words of the tongue at the occasion of marriage? Because 99% of marital problems are connected to our tongues. 99% of problems are connected to the way we speak in our marriages. We need to utter on a daily basis words that will put a smile on the faces of our spouses. We need to crack jokes which are decent inshallah with our spouses. The Prophet sallallahu did it. He made his wives smile and blush and laugh as well. Subhanallah. Obviously within the limits sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was as romantic as could be, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was an incident when he was eating a piece of meat. And Aisha radiallahu anha picked up this piece of meat and bit from it. And he looked at her from the corner of his eye. And he watched that she was watching him. So he picked up the piece of meat and he turned it around to find the place that she bit from. And looking at her with the corner of his eye, he then bit from exactly the same place, making her blush. Subhanallah. With us, if the wife has bitten, we will say, if I bite, I'm going to get the cough you have. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, to drink from a cup at exactly the same position that your wife drank from, is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why do we have to wait for the month of Ramadan? To hear this type of thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding and protection. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us a lot. And this is why he says, look, be careful of your tongues. You can utter good words or bad words. Say for example, there is something that you notice within the marriage. You need to talk. Communication is the most important thing in marriage. A lot of women folk, very sadly, they are upset. Suddenly it takes three weeks to find out why they were upset. And then we will find out it was something that really was not even worth mentioning. And this is why advice to everyone in this verse, speak that which is upright. Speak up when you have to speak. Because when you are silent, when you have to speak, it is also against the etiquettes of marriage. And a happy home will not be achieved. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. You need to talk. You have a problem, speak. But in good words. If you are sick, say that, look, I'm not well, that's why I'm not smiling. A husband comes to the home after a long day at work and he sees a woman cross. Wallahi, it puts his heart really on a different note, very low note. He feels like leaving the house once again. But a woman, to be honest with you, controls the love that a man has for her in almost all cases. Because when a woman pampers the man and looks after him and smiles at him and waits for him and is prepared to, to cook for him and really do everything for him naturally even if he likes it or not at some stage he will feel an inclination towards this woman and this is why the Prophet wasallam, when he distributed his wealth and his time perfectly he then says Allahumma hadha qasami fima amlik fala tuakhidni fima la amlik Oh Allah, I've distributed that which I control between my wives. I am being just amongst them. So now don't hold against me what I do not control. And that is how much I love them. They control it. Allahu Akbar.